Hello friends, welcome to our channel. Hope you are doing well and liking our videos on mutual funds. Please do share your thoughts on the topics that you would like to watch and we can try to make videos accordingly. Today's video is on the Nifty 150 mid cap index and how we can invest in the same. We would request not to skip any part of the video since it can result in misinterpretation or unsustainable investing. The most preferred strategy amongst many is to invest in companies which have a an evolving business model and secondly long growth runway. We invest in mutual funds for a goal which may be achievable in the short term which is 5 to 10 years and long term which is 11 to 20 years. In other words, most investors favor investing in mid-cap companies which can give manifold returns and can become large caps one day, thereby multiplying their wealth and create a sustainable corpus. There are three ways to go about this. Firstly, do your own research by understanding the technicals and fundamentals of the companies and their sectors. Secondly, engage the services of a fund manager and invest via an actively managed mid-cap mutual fund or a PMS and thirdly passive investing via an ETF mutual fund. In this video we will focus on the third option of investing in greater details by examining the nifty mid-cap 150 index by looking at the following. Firstly its construct, secondly the companies that make up the index thirdly sectoral composition, fourthly valuation and finally its performance. The Nifty 150 mid cap index as the name suggests consists of 150 companies. These companies are ranked between 101 to 250 in the Nifty 500 list and is based on their full market capitalization. In the stacking order, we have those Nifty 50 companies which are generally established industry leaders and represent 56% of the Nifty 500 total market capitalization. Then comes the Nifty Next 50 which are tomorrow's superstars. After this comes the Nifty 150 mid cap companies which, have, which comprise over 18% of the Nifty 500 market capitalization. The entire nifty structure is given for your understanding. Now whether they be large cap, mid cap or small cap, the ranking is not ma made merely on the basis of size but there are some unique characteristics for each type. Some of the classification is done on the basis of the following. 1. Average daily traded value. Secondly, market capitalization. Thirdly, average FII holding. And finally, free float. Additionally, around 60% of the promoter holding in mid cap companies is with the promoters, and only two fifths of it is available as free float. Interesting to note is that on examining the performance of the present 150 mid cap companies, the average constituent has been growing at 8.7%, while the EBITDA, EPS, and stock price has been growing at 12 to 13 percent. Of course, numbers relevant to individual companies may not be as significant to the index because a lot of it depends on its weightage. When it comes to the selection of companies in the index, it depends on the full market capitalization. However, for weightage, it depends on the free float market cap capitalization. Full market capitalization includes all of the shares provided by a company through its stock issuance plan. Free float market capitalization of a company is calculated by taking the equities price and multiplying it by the number of shares readily available in the market. Here is a top list of constituents in the mid cap 150 index at the time of recording this video. What's interesting to note is that the mid cap 150 index is a lot more diversified than the major indices. Unlike the nifty 50 index where the top 7 stocks have 50% weightage which makes it more volatile. 
This is also evident in the sector allocation, which is well diversified as compared to the Nifty 50. Also, remember that the mid cap index is very dynamic in nature, wherein some constituents which are performing well may move from the mid cap to the large cap and some may also move to the small cap according to its performance. This movement though should not bother an investor as long as he or she has a well diversified asset allocated portfolio. As with all indexes, the mid cap 150 index have had its periods of ups and downs. Nevertheless, it has given excellent returns over the long run. It has given an average return of 15.2% in the last 15 years. Interestingly, if we consider the trailing returns over 15 year period, the mid cap 150 index has given a CAGR return of 15% consistently. Even if we consider the 5 year low rolling returns, which is a wonderful way of reviewing a fund's performance, the mid cap index has given a median return of 15% amidst the global financial crisis in 2008 and COVID crash of 2020. Investors like you and me do not like to invest in lump sum mode and prefer SIP. You can check for the video on SIP for advantages in investing through SIP. So it becomes important to compare it in a staggered basis and here too we see consistent returns of more than 15%. If we compare the performance of the mid cap 150 index with the nifty 50, 100 and the small cap index, it clearly shows that the mid cap index has consistently outperformed other indexes. Let's also compare the performance with other actively managed mid cap funds. Since we have already established the returns of 15.2% for the mid cap index, however, it does not include expense ratio. Since we do not have a long term active mutual fund, we are assuming the average expense ratio of 0.5%. So here is what the performance of an actively managed fund category vis-a-vis -vis the passive index fund looks like, which shows that the self-adjusted index fund performs extremely well as against an actively managed fund. Of course, some of the mid caps funds would be outperforming the index in some years and would give lower returns in uh, some years. Hence, choosing a mid-cap fund and outperforming the index would be hard to find. <music> Lastly, let's look at the valuation perspective since investing boils down to pricing. Over time, we've seen mid-caps being valued obscenely high and at times unnervingly low. With regards to the PE ratio of the 150 mid cap index, the long term average PE ratio has been around 30. Currently, the 150 mid cap index PE is around 24. So, while choosing the right combination of fund basket, an investor has to keep in mind the growth story rather than its valuation. A simple way to invest in mid cap 150 index is to invest in an index fund or an ETF that tracks the index. The expense ratio of these funds range between 0.2 to 1%. Some of the best mid cap funds to invest currently are the Quant mid cap fund, Axis mid cap fund, PGIM, PGIM mid cap fund, Nippon India ETF, Motilal Oswal ETF fund, and ICICI Prudential ETF. Let's recap why one should invest passively in the mid cap 150 index fund. Firstly, it gives moderate to high growth because of the presence of 150 future companies having strong fundamentals. Secondly, better diversification of sectors uh, because of the presence of a lot of companies. Thirdly, potential to outperform and deliver high returns. And again, you know, this, this may differ, you know, 
from month to month or year on year or uh, you know with different funds as well fourthly cost effectiveness system and it is very systematic and transparent too so if you have liked the information provided in this video kindly subscribe to it like comment and share it with your family and friends and motivate us to you know bring out better informational videos for you thanks for watching until next time have a great day